This lesson is all about the different properties of matter and about the different kinds of changes that matter can undergo. Substances undergo changes when their conditions are changed. A change in condition could be something like an increase in temperature, some sort of mechanical force, exposure to another substance, or any other number of changes. If the same substance remains after the change, we know it's a physical change. If a new substance has appeared, we know a chemical change has occurred. First, let's talk about physical changes. Your book defines a physical change as a change in which the same substance is present before and after the change. So, no new substance is created, although the matter might take a different form. The size, shape, or color of the matter may change, but the actual substance stay the same. An example of this would be chopping a log. It might get shorter or smaller, but the log is still the log. One way to identify a physical change is that such changes are reversible. For example, if you freeze liquid water to make an ice cube, you can melt it back into liquid water again and it's still water. No new matter was formed during the course of all these changes. Here are many examples of physical change. Um, you could crush a can, but it'd still be a can. Um, break a glass, you'd still have glass. Mixing sand and water, it wouldn't change the substances, you're just mixing them together. Um, you could shred some paper, but you'd still have that paper there. You could tear something, paint something, cut something, write on something, fold something. If you do any of those actions, you still are not changing the actual substance. It's just um, either adding something to it, maybe changing the shape of it, something like that. Okay, now let's take a look at chemical changes. Your book defines a chemical change as a rearrangement of atoms and or molecules to produce one or more new substances with new properties. So in a chemical change, new matter is always formed. So for example, if we take a look at that same log earlier that we were chopping, and instead of chopping it, we burn it, um, we see that instead of having a log left over, we have ashes left over. So new matter was formed in that change. Now you can tell if there's been a chemical change because chemical reactions release or absorb heat or other energy, or they may produce a gas odor or sound. So here are some examples of chemical changes. Like we talked about with the burning wood, we'd be left over with ashes instead of the log that we started with. That's new matter. Um, anytime really you burn something, that will be the case. Uh, digesting food, you're going to end up with different matter than what you started with. That's a chemical change. Um, rusting, when iron comes in contact with that oxygen, um, you're going to get rust instead of the iron that you started with. That's new matter. Um, mixing an acid and a base to get something neutral, that's going to be a chemical reaction, new matter. Once again, a uh, chemical change. Now that we know the difference between physical and chemical changes, we can consider a substance based on its physical and chemical properties. A physical property is a property that can be observed without a change of substance. Some examples of physical properties include solubility, does it dissolve or does it not dissolve, um, color, the weight of the substance, mass, volume, density, which is just um, mass over volume. And here we have some physical properties that we could use to describe a substance. Um, we could describe its color by saying that it's yellow. Um, we could say that its mass is 7.5 grams, and we could say that it dissolves in water. That would describe its solubility. A chemical property is a property characteristic of a substance involved in a chemical change. And a few examples of chemical properties include um, whether or not the substance is flammable, if it's corrosive, like rust, um, its pH, whether it's basic or acidic, and whether or not it's explosive. Some examples of chemical properties that we could use to describe something would be whether or not it reacts with water, um, if it's combustible, um, or maybe if it's acidic. Okay, in conclusion, the biggest thing you need to remember is that um, in physical change, New matter is never, ever created. And then in chemical changes, new matter is always created.